University of Illinois undergrad uh, in crop science, correct, and went on to get her PhD at the University of Illinois and um, worked as a, what John Deere calls a part-time student, what normal people call a student intern, um, and worked her way there, became a professional in the organization and transitioned into a data scientist. And, but she's not talking about data science today, are you? We can have her talk about that another time. Because she has given some really awesome talks about that too. In addition though, not only that, but does anybody know who Dre's mom is? She might be sitting over here. So this is also why she's a legend, is that her mom also works in the research park. And actually, she helps her mom get her mom's job. And Julia runs the Country Financial Digital Lab. How many Country Financial folks are we here? All right. So I just, you know, I think it's a fun, fun human story. We like humans around here in the research park. But really, I think one of the things that um, I'm going to transition this over to Jure to talk about LinkedIn. And if you don't already follow Jure on LinkedIn, you should because she is a magician on there and she's one of my favorite people to be connected with on the platform so I'm really excited that she's here today to give this talk so please give a very warm research park welcome to our research park legend who's going to talk about LinkedIn today, Jure Tucker. So let's get into a little bit about LinkedIn. So I would say the next few slides are really focused on some stats about LinkedIn just to kind of give you a scale for how massive the platform is and just kind of how many people are on there. So these are all taken directly from LinkedIn's website. So there's over 930 million members worldwide. This is growing very rapidly. So what does this number mean? This is basically all of the people that you could connect with potentially just using uh, the platform. Over 63 million companies listed on LinkedIn. So if you're ever like, I don't know where I'd really like to work in the future, I'd like to look at other opportunities. Massive, massive, massive amount of companies on there for you to explore and look at what kind of offers they have for you. Over 61 million people are using LinkedIn to search for jobs each week. This would include things like part-time jobs or full-time jobs, um, internships, there's also things like volunteer opportunities, board memberships, association memberships, so a variety of things on there as far as opportunities for getting involved in the professional world. So again, if you think about the amount of people using the platform every week, it's pretty massive. So a little bit smaller numbers here. Uh, 117 job applications are submitted every second on LinkedIn. So if you've ever thought about, you know, applying on LinkedIn for anything you see, it's being used rapidly by people. Um, just the amount of, of use there in that job application space. And the last stat I have for you is that eight people are hired every minute on LinkedIn. So again, when we think about, I did some rough calculations. Essentially, if we said everyone in here was going to have a job by the end of the hour based on this stat, they would. That's pretty massive. Again, when you think about the scale of the platform and the amount of opportunities that are available on there. All right. So before I get into the first part of kind of looking at your profile, I do want to mention if there's any like questions at any point in time, feel free to raise your hand and, and shout it out. I'm going to answer anything now or um, at the end as well. Okay. So the first section is first impressions. Because first impressions are important, right? Especially when we think about online profiles, the first time someone clicks on your profile, what do you want them to see? So I'm going to go through and use my profile as kind of all of the example pictures here. But the very first thing is making sure you have a clear headshot as your profile picture. It's very disappointing to see the blue outline on there. The photo gives a personalization aspect, it's important. Um, using a header picture as well. Again, these are elements to add to your own personality. So, for example, the um, header that I have right now is from uh, the CES 
sh uh, showcase that John Deere was at uh, earlier this year. Then we got some really cool custom banners. These are also things that you can ask your current companies what kind of media is available that you can use as well. The other thing is having a descriptive headline. So using um, as many of the characters as you can in your headline with the most important words first. This is important because how many in people in here have used LinkedIn on their phone, like the mobile app? So when you search for people on there, you only see like the first five words of their title. So if you have something like, I'm interested in, that's, and then there's like a whole list of things you want to do, that's not helpful for you from a search perspective because they're not seeing the most important information first. The other couple of things for the top of the profile here, having your contact info filled in, so that's like an email address, and you can also have some things like GitHub pages and things like that. And then also making sure your latest employment and education is filled in. So again, these are things that are gonna come up right away. So um, for everyone in here that is working at Research Park right now, your headline should say where you are working right now. So if you didn't change that already, I recommend all of you do. So then if we move a little bit farther down the profile, we see the highlighted information. So there's a section called um, About, and this is essentially just a blank text box. So uh, some of my recommendations is just having about you know three to five sentences. There's a really, really large character limit for this, but to be honest, when you start to get into lots and lots of text, it's just gets a little bit more dirty. So I always recommend three to five sentences at a minimum. Just discuss your current role and what your education is. Later, as you get more experience, adding you know one to two past roles info, and then making sure to highlight your strengths and skills and interests in there as well. So I mentioned my current role, what my team does right now, some things that I did in the past, and then also uh, where I went to school. And then there's a section called Feature. So this is a place where you can spotlight important posts. So I really like this because every kind of few weeks I go in and I change them out and I put the latest posts of things that I put. I really like pictures. Um, you are more likely to get engagement if you have some type of media in posts that you put on LinkedIn. So most of my posts have some kind of picture or video attached to them. All right, second section. It's giving employable. Okay, that's what we want from the profiles. Able to go and get a job. All right, this part, I would say if you do nothing else except add a profile and change your headline, at least put one experience here. You can fill in things later. But please fill this in. This is critical. We go to LinkedIn to see the experience. So the experience needs to be filled in. When you do this, be sure to use the full titles for your position. A lot of people outside of like the University of Illinois ecosystem may not be familiar with some of the different title names or position names and things um, for the different companies. So it's important to make sure that you're using your full titles. Um, you want to make sure you highlight your main work responsibilities as well. I recommend in kind of a readable, readable sentence or two. So. We, this, is, this is not meant to be a copy-paste of 20 bullets from a resume. We really want this to be very easily to, to be digestible. So I recommend limiting your bullet points and also heavy jargon. Another thing is adding the media links or documents or pictures to showcase more information and add interactivity. So I'll call out um, from my experience at PMG. Uh, last year, my team was a finalist for um, Research Park Intern Awards, and so I actually linked to the Research Park website, and then I uploaded a photo of us as the thumbnail. So this is your chance to showcase, oh, here's um, an experience that I had with this position, kind of showcase, again, things that have happened to you, some different projects and things that people can click on and learn a little bit more about. Education. So, you want to make sure that you're using your full degree titles and concentrations. 
Again, people outside of the University of Illinois ecosystem may not be familiar with what all the different titles and abbreviations are for the different majors. So make sure you spell out the entire thing and your concentrations. If you have minors, um, you know, you can put those in the title or you can put them in the description. And then again, you have the ability to add media so you can showcase uh, you know, a project that you worked on, an article that you might be featured in. Um, you can put your major's website. Uh, you, know, you can also customize the thumbnail. So just making sure to, again, keep that interactivity up. And if there's some interesting things that you want to highlight from your educational experience specifically, this is a good place to, to put that. So I actually, um, this is the Crop Sciences Department website, but I actually uh, snipped this thumbnail from like the homepage. Some links will automatically fill in a picture for you, but most of the time I don't like what those defaults are, so I just go and make my own. Honors and awards. So a variety of awards uh, can go here. If you've ever gotten any scholarships, fellowships, um, if you're on the dean's list, honors of any sort, um, competition rankings, hackathons, all of those things can go here. And if you're like, I'm not sure if I've gotten anything yet or I haven't had anything yet because I'm only a freshman or sophomore in college or things like that, you can add some things from high school. Uh, we, we all know this. We know that you're here to get experience and build those things up. So if there's some important things from high school, um, like National High School Honor Society or other things, awards you won in that time period, that's okay to put those things there as well. You also want to make sure to add the associated organization. So this is pulled directly from your experience list. So you want to make sure you fill out your experience list and your education and things because it's going to pull from that. And you can, it's like a drop down and you can actually select that. Volunteering. So another section of the profile here. Um, make sure that you use the title to state you know, what the position was and also what the event name was. Uh, online events only um, also count. So for example, um, if anyone's familiar with the Grace Hopper Celebration of Women in Computing, um, I volunteered for them several years in a row. It's a fully virtual commitment where you're reviewing um, you know, scholarships and um, different proposals for the talks and things online. So you can put those kinds of things in here. If any type of kind of college event that you participated in, anything in the community, um, nonprofit organizations, be sure to put all of that information here. All right, so now we've kind of done the bulk of the profile, so let's talk about kind of the, the last few parts of the profile. So one of the things I wanted to highlight was the skills section. So according to this blog post from LinkedIn, this was February um, of this year, they listed the most in-demand skills that they see on their platform based on their own statistics and research that they've done. Um, I just selected a couple here because I think that this uh, kind of covers a lot of different disciplines in the area, but they actually have it broken down into other disciplines as well. Um, for example, in the engineering space, we have things like SQL, Python, cloud computing, Git, and then if we think, um, you know, outside of kind of the programming language side of things in the project management space, it would be things like leadership, analytical skills, strategy, research. So there's a really wide range of types of skills that you can add there, but I highly recommend that you add the skills to your profile. There's lots of other sections that you can add as well to customize your profile. I highlighted um, six others. Uh, of note. Uh, one of them is recommendations. So if you'd like professional recommendations from your peers, showcase either your managers or other people that you've worked with on your team, um, you can actually ask them to essentially submit a little blurb about a project or something you worked on and it stays on their profile for others to read. There's the courses section. So if you have uh, college coursework that you want to highlight. I know sometimes employers are looking for specific sets of skills in certain courses, um, especially like in the computer science field, a lot of times they're looking for some specific software development courses and things like that. This is an area where you can highlight those. Languages, are you proficient at speaking multiple languages? So if you know a whole bunch of languages at varying, I think there's like different difficulty, like, um, like proficiency levels that they have, 
Um, go ahead and put those in there. Again, something that can help you in the, in the job search. In the project space, if you have any group or research work that you want to feature, um, as an example, in graduate school, I was part of, uh, part of a specific grant um, around some uh, digital media work. And so I have that project on my profile that has like, all of the professors I work with and kind of a blurb about the project. So that's a place you could put uh, some different work experiences there that you want to highlight. And then publications. So I think a lot of people see publications and they're like, I don't have a journal article publication. Um, that's okay. It doesn't have to be a journal article. It could be a blog post that you've written. It could be a newsletter. It could be something for your department. Um, is it some kind of written media that's somewhere out there on the internet? That can go here. The last section I have here is organization. So are you in any college or professional organizations? If you're in any RSOs um, or any like national organizations like ACM or things like that, this is also a place that you can add those in. Okay, so the last thing that I want to talk about is tracking your stats. So on LinkedIn, one of the really cool things is that you can see a lot of information about where your profile is showing up, who's looking at your profile, how much engagement you're getting on your profile, and also posts and things that you would put on there. And so I just highlighted like three different tools, one of them being LinkedIn itself, um, but then there's two others um, as well that you can do free trials for just to get a feel for the types of things that you can look at. Um, one is Analytics and the other is Shield, and I'll show some examples of those. Uh, one of the other things to just, when we think about this, is you want to monitor where and how your profile and posts are showing up. Um, a lot of times I notice when I change things in my headline or, you know, or I post new things, you'll get a new uh, you know, audience or group of people to come and engage with your profile. So um, I do a lot of, I would say most of my tracking through LinkedIn. So as an example of just some screenshots of kind of what you might see, um, I know that the LinkedIn kind of the premium subscriptions can be expensive. Although if you click on the button, you know, enough times, sometimes they'll be like, do you want a free trial? Which you should do. Um, but if you are looking at your profile and you're like in the edit of your profile, there's a section called analytics. And it'll tell you how many profile views you've had in the last 90 days, uh, post impressions for your most recent post, as well as search appearances, um, which shows you kind of how you appear when people are going into the search bar on LinkedIn and they're searching for people or content related to you know, data science or something. It'll show you where you're coming up and what search terms are related to that. So for example, you'll get this box um, that says viewers you might be interested in. And it'll tell you, oh, I've got 22 people in the last 90 days that work at John Deere that looked at my profile. Okay, that would make sense, I work there connected with a lot of people there, right? But then there's also people like, oh, there's people from the recruiting industry or people from the, the University of Illinois. Other things it shows you are things like top demographics of unique viewers. I'm not exactly surprised to see data scientists or data analysts uh, on here since I work with, with those sort of, sort of folks all the time. Um, but there might be some others here that you may not expect. Keywords you were found for. So these are people going into the search bar and typing things in. So notice PhD is up here. I have PhD at the end of my name on LinkedIn. It's technically not part of my last name. But when you search that, you will find me. And then there's things like technology manager, research scientist manager. So again, those kinds of words are getting typed in and they're coming back to my profile. With analytics and Shield, um, if you do the free trials for those. It shows some really cool uh, visualizations and very detailed um, breakdowns of the stats of your prof uh, profile um, and the posts. So it's really cool as Shield, will, Shield and Analytics will also do engagement calculations to show you, um, you know, out of the thousand people that looked at this post, there was, you know, 10% engagement or something. They were commenting or liking or things like that. So this was kind of helpful to look at just kind of where your profile is showing up and kind of how your posts are doing and the audience that you're wanting to reach. If you look at some of this information and you're like, I don't know if that's the audience that I want to see me, change things on your profile and that will change. 
So I know I gave a lot of information <laughs> over, the, over the course of this, but if there's just three basic things to remember, just fill the profile out. Take a half an hour, hour, do a good once over, fill it out, be active on there. Use LinkedIn's features. They offer those features like adding your skills and the pictures and you know so many characters for a headline for a reason. Use that. The last thing is tracking your stats. Experiment and keep your profile updated. If you've never used LinkedIn and you like, you know, never update your profile or anything, it's not going to help you the one time you do update your profile and do nothing else. So you want to make sure that you're active on there and every time you get new experiences and things going in there and adding that. And that is it for me. Thank you. I guess I'll say any, any questions? How much time do you spend maintaining and updating your LinkedIn and finding new connections a week? What does that look like? So, I would say I probably spend about five to 15-ish minutes a day on LinkedIn, usually on my phone. Um, kind of speed through, see what the latest is. It might be a little bit longer if I'm posting something, but I don't have like a super regular post uh, schedule. As far as searching for weekly connections, um, if you have the free version of LinkedIn, it will cap you fairly quickly. I don't know what that, like how many times you can actually scroll through a list of people. Um, but I would say as far as searching for new connections, I would say maybe on a monthly basis, it's maybe a half an hour or less. I don't spend a ton of time doing that. But I will say a lot of times um, that's because of the posts and then the people that come to my posts and then messages that come from that. So I would say a lot of interactions that I've had was actually not from me just specifically searching, but from seeing engagement and going, oh, they look interesting, and then going and talking to those people. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, do you have any recommendations specifically what the posts for data science under your like, several criteria or several categories? As far as kind of filling out the different sections, or? Yeah. yeah. I would say, so I would say one, definitely the skills, definitely the skills section, whatever languages and technologies you're using the most um, should definitely be there. I would say for that too, highlighting one or two projects that gives kind of a good breadth of skill set versus something super, super specific that maybe you couldn't give enough context to. So that's something that um, mine currently is a, a little bit more general, but uh, I would say definitely maybe highlighting like one or two projects where you could say, oh, we used this, you know, we used Python to, you know, create this interactive dashboard and then it, you know, helps the business in this way or something like that. So. Um, I would say those two things are definitely helpful. The other is that sometimes in the headline, students are like, I need to put every single buzzword possible into the headline. Um, we, can, we can tell that <laughs> when, when you do that. So I would say be a little bit more creative about how you show up there. If it's like, you know, data scientist at this company, um, you know, specializes in cloud computing and, um, you know, visualization or something like that, you know, enjoys AI, collaboration, leadership, things like that. So trying to make it a little bit more sentence-based than just Python, comma, SQL, comma, those, it just, you want it to be an enjoyable experience reading that, so. You spoke about uh, adding previous positions to your profile. Does that include internships and how best to word things like, if, if it's like three internships, they, I don't want all of them to say intern in the, in the job title. So uh, how would you recommend you change those things, especially if you're in a field where you do similar kinds of internships and you don't really know how to distinguish between those, except for the fact that there are different places. So I would say, 
I would say it's a, it's a little bit difficult to just completely remove the interim title. I would say that's, that is an important piece, and I don't think that necessarily detracts from anything. Um, I would definitely make sure if, let's say for example, we'll just use, I'll just use Apple and Facebook as an example. Let's say you were a software developer at Apple, but you were on a team specifically for the iPhone. Okay, if you can say something like that, I would put that in there. So like, um, if it's like, oh, I worked as a software developer on Facebook at Facebook, but specifically for the Messenger app or the Messenger team. Those things can help, you know, differentiate even within the same company. I've worked on a few different teams at Deer. So in my position, I have data scientists, um, but I have our data-driven innovation team, but I also have data scientists with our product analytics team. So those things can also help to kind of give that next layer, so it's not just like software developer with, with nothing else. Um, and even my current title, it's like manager of data science, you could do that in a variety of teams at Deer. Um, but I specifically, in our team, it's advanced sensing. So that helps people to kind of contextualize things quicker. Um, I think you also mentioned that you want to break down sort of how your work has affected the company or mm -hmm. if, uh, for academia, like how much it's like, um, since I think for the academic part, and I think even for my company part, it seems to be more science-based, even though the company part is a little bit more academic-based, so how would you necessarily recommend coordinating sort of how your contribution has led to something meaningful? Yeah, so, so my, my guidance for that would be talking to your supervisor or manager about what the larger impacts of what the team is doing. That is, um, that is something that has helped me where I'm like, hey, we did all this cool stuff. What exactly, what exactly does this mean? Um, and, and also just kind of being honest with them about like, hey, I want to explain this. Could you give me some suggestions on how to best explain this? Um, I know that was like not highly specific, but that's something that helped me is when I think about explaining kind of what we do at the team or what we do at the center. Um, speaking you know, with our site director about, hey, I want to talk about this in a presentation. I want to present this work. It's going to be super technical. That's great. But I want the so what side at the end. What would, that, what would that look like? And a lot of times, just having those conversations about the projects can help give you that idea on what exactly you should put there and how to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, for the publication, do you think it's better to release as the publication or just put the media link in the service? So I would say I would say a little bit that I would say a little bit of a personal choice. Um, the only thing to think about is placement. Uh, publication, the publication section, I think, is typically a little bit farther down on the LinkedIn profile. Um, but you can also put a much larger abstract. But in the experience section, there's the character limits for the media links are much, much, much shorter. So if you, if you can't describe the paper in a sentence, it may not be a good place to, to put that. So the publication section, specifically for like journal articles and things, I recommend for that because you can actually just put the whole abstract and also more details about like the journal location and things like that. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, I was kind of curious on what you'd recommend for people who like who haven't really posted like anything on their um, on their group before, just because I remember you mentioning in the presentation I just got like um, a few of your posts. What would you recommend for someone who's never posted, and maybe someone who doesn't really have any like major project going on, like a research project or a journal? So as far as, uh, you know, for a first post, I see, uh, especially a lot of first time interns, a very uh, easy accessible post would be, I'm super excited to start this summer, excuse me, you know, at John Deere as a data science intern, and then sometimes they'll tag their hiring manager or others 
Um, that's like something I see. Very, very easy post if you're like, I've never posted before, or even if you have link, you know, you have been on LinkedIn for a while and, this, and you haven't posted for a while, that's also a good kind of get your feet wet post type of situation. Um, and then I would say, I would say don't worry too much about, oh, I need to have all the sections filled out, or I have, you know, nothing in some of those recommended areas. That's okay. You've done the most important and the hardest work if you have at least one job experience in there. You have your, you know, at least the, the degree you're currently in, in there, and you've got a picture and a headline. You've done the most important parts of the work, and over time, you can add that in there. The other thing I want to note, too, um, a lot of companies have rules on social media usage and posting. You'll notice about 95% of my posts are about John Deere. We have a specific hashtag that we must use on our posts because they are monitored. So I want to mention before everyone just posts all kinds of things all the time about their company, there may be some things that you either need to get pre-approved or you have to use specific hashtags if you want to mention things about the company. So. All right, so I'm gonna ask the audience a question. Um, who's, gonna, who's gonna go home this evening and they're gonna update their LinkedIn profile or put a post out there? Every, all hands, I hope everyone. <laughs> all right, I think that's it. Thanks everyone.